everyone, I'm Richie and welcome to Helix Cloud Games and this is SideQuest, the show where we take a step off the critical path and explore more what the video game world has to offer. On this week's show, I'm joined by the host of the Sounds of Stadia podcast, Mr. Chris. Hello gamers. And this week we're talking about where in the world should Stadia go next. But first, a quick bit of housekeeping, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell icon for notifications when all of our great shows go live, such as the Sound Stadia podcast, every single Monday on YouTube and on podcast services. Our Thursday night live streams, which I don't know, as usual, what we've played, because this comes out the day after we played it. <laughs> Something on Stadia. Um, yeah, but if you want to get this at, um, early access to the show, you can from as little as 99p by becoming a YouTube member. Uh, make sure if you want to join the conversation even further or you have a cool idea for a topic that you want us to discuss head over to our discord server there's a link in the description below and one more thank you to everyone who supported us now helix cloud gaming celebration 2021 where we we um, raised money over a thousand pounds for alzheimer's society in the help to fight against dementia you're all awesome thank you so chris where yes. are we going? Where in, in the, the world? world? Where in the world PC is Stadia world. going next? <laughs> um, yeah, so the the reason we've, we've broached this topic this week is because there was an article about a fortnight ago now where xCloud has expanded into more countries. And it got us thinking, where yeah. next for Stadia? Because um, they, they launched, obviously, in a few more countries earlier in the year. The availability has expanded a little bit more. Romania, Switzerland, and such. And I'm just curious, with with xCloud and obviously Microsoft having this massive push into more countries, they've now surpassed Stadia, if I'm right in thinking. They're, they're now at 26 countries, where Stadia's, I think, 22, 23. So they're now ex- yeah. they've gone past them, not by much, but obviously in every country is different and such. But they're not, they've now overtook them in terms of territories, and I think, for me, the biggest one is the, the types of territories they've expanded into. Yeah, this is something I was going to bring up. So the X, the it's four new um, territories that Microsoft xCloud is... Well, xCloud Gaming, as they're calling it now. Mm-hmm. Which, xCloud's better, guys. Um, the four new territories they're exploring into are Australia, Brazil, Mexico, and Japan. And uh, for me, Brazil's actually the one that jumps out there because I see so many people asking um, Google Stadia, when is it coming to Brazil? Mm-hmm. Yeah, tag them in it all the time. It's obviously it's those emerging markets where there's a massive population and a thirst for gaming, but financially because of the way import tax and stuff works, is the consoles aren't necessarily as viable to purchase. I know getting your hands on a, a now two generations or like PlayStation Three and stuff, it's still not amazingly cheap in, in the likes of Brazil to to just game in general and in cloud gaming alleviates that so it's a market that if you can get that early doors penetration into and you kind of plant your flag nice and early it's a great opportunity to kind of if you've failed in other countries it's a great way to make up for it and and with microsoft and xbox i think japan's another great get because yeah. the japanese culture they like to game on the on the move and portable gaming is 100 percent in their wheelhouse that's why even playstation compared to nintendo switch doesn't do that great it's but why the game boy tri- exists yeah. it's why yeah. the psp existed yeah <laughs> uh, but taking these triple a games on the move could be huge for J- japan so i think stadia missing these opportunities to get into these emerging markets it it makes me wonder like where are they at i think we've said a few times like similar to uh, india India is like the population of India and the thirst for like gaming inter- internet structure is huge. Yeah. And right. we know they've opened up new servers over there. So I'm hoping it's not too long, but it's kind of like, don't, you, you want to be fest in the door, I feel like, to like really just push your platform in these new emerging markets. I wonder if sometimes Google have been a bit, taking a bit more of a cautious approach than Microsoft, where with Microsoft, if xCloud doesn't work very well for someone in an emerging country, let's say you, let's say you are in Brazil and your internet connection isn't great, xCloud doesn't work, you also uh-huh. have the physical box to fall back on. Yep, Stadia true. doesn't have that, so the entire experience is dead, is connected to your internet, what your ISP is providing you and your home networking setup. Mm-hmm. So if these aren't adequate, you're not going to have a good time. That's, that's the reality of cloud gaming in a nutshell. Like, yeah. You need good internet, and good internet isn't just what how many megabits per second is on the marketing stuff from your ISP. It's what is your what's your router doing, 
what what what's your router doing? What's what is your home networking system? How many devices are on the network? Who's streaming? Do you have all? Do you have like five kids streaming four K video on the hundred megabit mm-hmm. per second internet? Yeah, and wondering yeah. why Assassin's Creed and um, Valhalla is is being a bit choppy, like. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wonder sometimes is Google trying to take that into account? So with them expanding servers into these countries, yeah, maybe this is a way of going getting a bit more control over the the infrastructure in that country to guarantee not just this won't be just Stadia, it'll be all their products, but to guarantee a better performance for their products. Yeah, very true. And yeah, we should yeah we should definitely clarify like the the competition out there XCloud obviously have Microsoft's backing and they've also got the physical box, yeah. which you said, which a lot of the other cloud competition doesn't really have that. Um, GeForce Now is, of course, in, in loads and loads of countries as well. Um, Amazon Luna are, are still restricted in this kind of little beta phase to the United States. Um, which, that surely that's got to be coming to an end soon. So surely they want to start trying to look, looking into pushing that into more countries, even if it is still in a, an early access or beta stage. Yeah, you would imagine so because it, yeah. it does feel like it's been some time, and yet we we just hear nothing, nothing about it. But again, cloud gaming in it, in its general sense is still like in such its infancy in comparison to, I think did Nintendo had like their anniversary recently, and they're like a hundred six seven year old or something. So it's like yeah, but in in that they, scope, they uh, Nintendo had its history in like Hanafuda cards and stuff. Oh and yeah, 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 I'm just the saying in industry in there. general in general terms of like age sense. It's like cloud gaming is so, so young and the technology is, like you said, in emerging markets, they might not have the infrastructure to actually run these programs yet. And we don't know. Like We, we just don't have that that resource to, to know that. Um, one of the points I did want to focus on for Stadium in particular, because I've not looked at this list in a while, is the listed countries. And there's a little caveat on the website. If you go to support.google.com forward slash Stadia, um, I didn't realise, Richie, but the Stadia controller is currently... Um, not available for, for sale in Poland, Portugal, Czechia, Slovakia, Romania, or Hungary. So if you live in those countries that has Stadia, you cannot buy the Premier Edition or the controller, which it now makes me realise, because we've said on the podcast a few times, how of all of all of like our listeners and all of the other Stadia content creators out there, there's very little coming out of like these new countries that got added earlier in the year. Like we hear nothing from like the Polish Stadia community, the Portuguese, the the Czech, Slovakia, Romania. Is do they just not exist or they can't? Well, they can't buy anything <laughs> because I mean, well, yeah, well, exactly. But we, we like we we don't talk that much because of the language barriers. But like I'm very consciously aware of Stadia France, Stadia like je, like teams, content creators in these countries, Spanish Stadia, Espanol, and that, and yet. There's not even a peep. So, yeah, Poland, Portugal, Czechia, like countries that do speak English as a second language as well for the most part, and yet they yeah, can't get their hands on a... Pre- We're getting, what, our third free Premier Edition with the current offer that's on, if you yes. buy Far Cry FIFA. Our We've third made, free may have promotion. even received it by the time this goes out to non Yeah, yeah, very, very true. And yet, in these countries that Stadia is readily available in, you can't get a controller. So no that's wonder there's weird. no there's no thirst or desire to play the platform if you can't get that's, some of the basic fundamentals for playing it. That for me is just a weird decision. Like because we're talking one, two, three, four, six countries here that you're in that people can't get your hardware. I know you can play Stadia on any, anything. You mm-hmm. can play on a, a Chromebook. You can play on your phone. Wh- whatever. But I think for a lot of people when they think of video gaming, they're thinking of Stadia as potentially a con as an alternative to a traditional console, they probably want a Chromecast, they want a, con- a Stadia controller. And not to not be able to get one in your country. And, and these yeah. aren't like... You know, it, like this, know, is, it, this is not like a, somewhere like a San Marino, or like, no offence to San Marino, like at least a tiny, shots, tiny little... A tiny, <laughs> a, tiny, a tiny little country. A smaller um, country, yeah. Yeah, th- these are... Well... But part of the European it's Union. It's Portugal, it's Boston, Czechia, yeah. it's Slovakia, it's... It's Poland, it's Romania, it's Hungary. It's like, yeah. What, what on earth, mate? What? On earth? I would love to know the story of like, do they have other Google products? Is there like 
some political situation yeah. there. Well, weirdly enough, as well, if you if you read on in the there's like a little separate like amber coloured bracket um, to point this out. The next bullet point does say a Stadia controller supported Google TV or Android TV device or a Chromecast Ultra purchased in another European country where Stadia is available either separately or part as a bundle, will work in Poland, Portugal, Czechia, Slovakia, Romania, and Hungary. So if you just go across the border or order one from eBay, it will work. So just why does Google not have a logistical infrastructure to deliver a Premier Edition or a controller to these countries? It's such an odd thing. And again, it goes back to the marketing marketing strategy. Obviously, we don't see what goes on in these countries. But if you're in Poland, as an example... Is there just nothing? Like, are you not seeing YouTube ads for Stadia? Obviously, we know there's no billboard ads or anything. But are we just seeing it from, like, a UK lens where, I mean, we don't really see any Stadia. In fact, we don't even see yeah. much cloud gaming marketing full stop. But I just think with Microsoft pushing to these other countries, like Australia and stuff as well, like an English-speaking country where like, we can relate to them to some degree, it just seems... Uh, there's just some odd, odd, odd choices and odd moves. Yeah, I, I, this is why this is what leads me. The fact that it's you can it works, the hardware works. It's just not available. Makes me wonder. And I haven't done any research into this. So if anyone knows the situation, let us know in the comments. But is there a, like a weird political situation? Is over Google products available in the country? Are Google Net is the Google Nest range there? Is like the Google Pixel range there? Is it just a, is there some sort of reason that Google can't sell directly mm-hmm. into these countries? Mm. Because it would seem odd if they've got already got things like distribution factories for their products in the in the in these countries to not just had we we really actually we're only really talking about the Stadia controller as well. Yeah. Because if you assume they've already got the Chromecasts there, they've got the infrastructure to distribute around Poland, around Czechia, around Slovakia, around Romania, around Hungary, around Portugal. Like, what? Well, I just, I don't know. This is, it's just weird. I. Yeah, I mean, if if you go down like the again, the website's all accessible for everyone to read. There's some interesting points which I didn't even comprehend beforehand, which is. Um, things like why, why if I move, what happens to my game? So games that you purchase prior to relocating to a new country will stay in your library. However, due to licensing restrictions, you may not be able to access every game in your library from your new country. That I um, think that's um, an unavoidable side of oh, oh yeah, I, I totally get that. I just it's something you didn't don't even think about. It it's, also says why can't I buy a game in my country? And it says yeah, game availability availability will maybe vary. Based on publishers choosing to make their games available, it's why. But that's a whole. It's the same. Thing. It's the same thing as why you can't get like certain shows on UK Netflix, but they'll be on US Netflix. Yeah, it's yeah. that same ballpark. Yeah. Um, I know Australia are really strict yeah. on their kind of age ratings as well. I know there's a lot of games that you just can't even buy in Australia. So Germany is um, quite strict on certain censorship um, issues as well. So this, so this is why you can get different. You might even have the same content, but it might be slightly different from region to region. Yeah, definitely. You're getting into the political element there, which which usually sucks, to be honest, for the consumer. Mm. But it's what it is. Yeah. In terms of expansion, though, so xCloud, Australia, Brazil, Mexico, Japan. I'm guessing, I'd hope to see, Stadia just follow suit with these countries. Yeah, like soon. Like if Microsoft have the like the whole network set up there, we know Google and cl- like just cloud in general, like Amazon's AWS network and Google and Microsoft, they're the biggest players in the market. They have these infrastructures all over the planet now. Surely it's just a matter of time. But again, I think it's it's the lack of marketing that doesn't come with it. That's the worrying thing. Like if you can't get your hands on a controller in an available country. Like, we've had it quite easy, if you think about it. We signed up, we were just sent our controller in the post, and we booted it all up, and it worked. If you're in Romania right now, you've do you, have you even heard of Stadia still? It's available in your country, and yet... But it's not no really... Google... It's not even fully available, I'd say, unless you can get the hardware. Like, again, I we, I, we know that you can play Stadia without the dedicated um, Google hardware, but I still If you're not sent people... any hardware, though, what's the push to try it or test it out? Yeah, because like we obviously you plug your Chromecast in, you boot up the control, and you're like, oh my god, this this cloud what it works like it's see there's no console and it the game it's, it's running Cyberpunk that's amazing. 
But yeah, what's the push to just log on to Stadia.com and go test the game? We still see people kind of not fully understand, especially if you're on Facebook or Twitter, not fully understand how cloud gaming works. Mm Mm-hmm. Like you still see people referring to as, oh, with this new game, will Google send me the Stadia or a Stadia? It's like, there isn't a Stadia. Yeah. There isn't, you don't get a box. You could just pull out your phone and play. Like, it's just, you're watching, it's a video stream. It's like Netflix. You don't have a Netflix in your house. Yeah. I have a Netflix. I have two. You have a Netflix. I don't really. Um, I think, for me, me, the, the whole crux of this really is, is the kind of the push into newer markets? I think it gives them a, a fresh opportunity to promote the product. Yeah, and I think with with like a fresh, it's almost like a soft reboot. So when Stadia does finally launch in India, where we've seen loads of people tweet out and tag when's it coming to my country. Every time you relaunch a new country, you've got a whole new opportunity for marketing. You've got a whole new advertisement campaign to run. Obviously, there's money to be spent anyway, but it's. I think it's just a fresh start that can change the narrative yeah. and you're in control of that because it's your public launch in that country with a different language potentially as well where marketing is going to work differently. And I think, yeah, like launching it in like and xCloud going where, to Japan is like huge. It's a big move for Microsoft. This is one where I think Google's start is losing ground. Well, Xbox is now overtaken, but what... The thing is, like traditionally, you've had like almost like three pillars of gaming. You've had your console gaming, your PC gaming, and your portable gaming. Cloud gaming is almost basically becoming a fourth pillar of that, yeah. and so that's something that you, you, a soft push isn't going to do it. You need a hard push because you need people to understand what cloud gaming is, how it differs from the others, how it works, what mm-hmm. are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, and Google came. At the start, Google was well ahead, I thought, because they were the first like mainstream cloud gaming platform on the market. But then, then I don't think they're doing enough to educate people on cloud gaming. So if they want to launch in a new territory, that's a perfect opportunity to run a marketing campaign explaining what cloud gaming is, how it works. Mm-hmm. Ex- drilling it into people's minds that like, you do not need a box in your living room. You don't need to fork up four hundred, five hundred pounds for this thing that you attach to your TV. Um, if you want to play on your TV, if you have a smart TV that's Stadia compatible, which more and more are getting are becoming so, especially going forward with new new models, you can just play it, or you can use um, your phone to attach a controller that you've got lying around to your Chromecast now. Hmm. So right. all these little features they all add up, but I think we hear about them in like these little dribs and drabs through like blog through like leaked news or blo- or the blog um, feeds. But I don't think they've ever, they don't really seem to be pulling anything together as a cohesive package to kind of, it's an educational package almost that I think they need. Yeah. To go yeah, like, one, yeah, this is the, how it works. One of the best, the best videos they put out on the YouTube channel was the what is Stadia, where it starts off and it literally types like what is Stadia question mark in a Google search. Yeah. And it takes you through, like, oh, it's the new answer to cloud gaming. Play all your library on all the devices you already own. I think it's such an easy marketing message to get across. But you're totally right. Microsoft have the advantage of they can bundle that in with X, uh, with Game Pass and the console. So if you're familiar with the way the console works, take it on the move with you. It makes sense. But you're right, that message in getting it across of how simple it is and how accessible it is, Yeah, it needs to be drilled home. And like, like I was saying, every new country is a brand new opportunity to launch this product. And you know what? All the goodwill you could garner from maybe a launch in Australia could then be transferred over to other territories yeah. because, oh, it worked there. And then that could even ease some of the pressure they've had in existing territories, in Canada, the States, France, wherever. It adds if more you people. Garner, you get, yeah, it's you, more people. Ecosystem grows. I wonder. It's, it's, I'm trying to think of what the reasons why they might not... not for. Uh, Somewhere Australia, it's got good infrastructure. So what's the reason that they're not expanding in Australia yet? Does it? I thought Australia's was bad. Is it? I was, I'm, I'm sure like it's, the it's sheer quite... size of the country. I just figured it would be difficult. Yeah, but it's kind of everything's in the coast in Australia. There's not a lot happening in the middle. The the, yeah, uh, the most rural really parts rude. in Australia are very very rural. Don't get mm. me wrong. But the places like Canberra and Sydney and Perth and places like that. They'll have good infrastructure. Like, 
I mean, yeah, and you see, yeah. I mean, it's the same in the UK, to be fair. Like, my, yeah. I, we, we have one internet provider in our local area, Richie, that's good. The other ones yeah. all share the same network, well, and it's terrible, well, <laughs> but there's nothing we can do. This, We're just fortunate we have one good one. Um, these, of, like, these, like, technically two good ones, but they're not both available everywhere. Yeah, mm. It's usually, um, you're in an area serviced by this fibre provider, or this one. Yeah. That's you know how, how I feel. It can't be. So I, I, I feel can get really bad for who in the in the rules on the website, um, Alaskans and Hawaiians, because oh, you know, yeah. it's available in the United States. Nope, not in the snowy the snowy uh, state of Alaska, in the in the yeah. city of Nome or the Again, town of Nome. Th- this happen. could be this could be the infrastructure arguments. I, I, yeah. I don't know about Hawaii, but Alaska, from what I understand, is quite a remote place. Like We do know um, Stadia does work in Hawaii, though, because our friend Brian yeah. from the Nerf Report did actually go yeah. on holiday and test it in his hotel, and it worked. So, yeah. again, it works in these countries, you just and, and states, evidently. Yeah. But I wonder if it's like, I do think sometimes, is it reputation um, protection that they're not going to launch it in somewhere where they mm. think the majority of people won't get a good experience? Possibly. Um, but... Because... They don't want to launch it if they launch it in somewhere where everyone's running on like dial up yeah. and then go, oh, Sadie doesn't work. And it's like, well, yeah. actually, no, it's your internet sucks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, there obviously are obviously reasons and they'll know the statistics more than anything. I think it is yeah. more down to just accessibility and availability. And obviously, they know more than well, anybody. But in terms of just regional, if, if Microsoft can expand into Japan, I don't believe Google cannot. I think. Like if, Brazil- if, if they can go to Australia, why can't Google do that? Like the in, the the comparison between Microsoft servers and Google's can't be that far apart. So either yeah. they're just behind the pace a little bit, or Again, are they not I investing think, anymore. That's uh, the, the other argument. The potential difference in how the reputation could be affected though is very different, because I think Microsoft, although I've been very much on record saying I think the current the current generation Xboxes are probably planned to be the last physical consoles Microsoft produce. It might not pan out that way. We'll see how the console generation goes. Mm -hmm. But they're clearly moving for a cloud gaming future. Microsoft still at the moment have that box. That is the main way to play Xbox. xCloud is a supplementary way. Google Mm -hmm. don't have that. Stadia is the way. That's how you play in their ecosystem. Yeah. So if if Stadia doesn't if you go, if somewhere that you have terrible internet and you play xCloud you play Stadia Stadia doesn't work for you that's it mm. xCloud doesn't work for you you still have the option to buy the box yeah the, there is part so of me just think that like are they just like not rolling out as much as expected like is there plans to even expand into these countries because we hear that little from them like, Phil Spencer's Surely. always actively came out and said, like, oh, we're looking to get into as many places as possible. And then they've done it. Yeah, surely yet... the, pl- the plan will be definitely to expand. Everywhere. Um, there's no reason why they wouldn't want to, because the more you expand, the more you're increasing your potential customer base, yeah. Yeah. which is yeah. good for... It's good for everyone. It's literally good for everyone. If you are in Brazil, you finally get your hands on Stadia, it's good for you. It's good for the infrastructure of places like Brazil because there's more and more people on cloud gaming. That puts pressure on ISPs to up their game. Yeah, and yeah. whatever the situation is in your country, it, it's that simple demand. If you if there's enough demand, either whether it's government run or private run, companies are going to want to take they're going to want to take opportunity of that of that demand. So there's there's that element. And it's it's good for Stadia because it's more sales. It's good for multiplayer games because there's more people to play with. So it's just like it's kind of a win 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 for ex- win. for more expanding into places. Um, so th- hypothetical, just a summary question then, Richie. With all these expansions happening, question one, I guess, is when do you think the next Stadia push will be? I don't think they're going to do one country. It's usually going to be a, like a collective effort do you think it's this side of christmas or next year i think next year at this point next year and but there question, again it, this is hard to predict we've still oh yeah you, could... you never really know what's going on uh second question x cloud stadia luna geforce now who gets into china first oh that's see this is when you get into the interest the like the very complicated political situation which we haven't really touched on because expanding into countries is not just a case of Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to set up shop in India. 
you kind of need the approval of the Indian government to do stuff like yeah. that. Oh, yeah, there's lots of... Which is where China becomes interesting because they're very... Um, yeah. the, I mean, we, yeah. we know, we've not mentioned it on the podcast, but we know there are restrictions on kids playing games now. It's like, what, two hours yeah. a, week, a week or something? Well, um, or do you think Tencent are going to come out and just... Are they going to make their own cloud gaming? I could see it almost going that way. Maybe. Mm. There's all there's rumours about Stadia going white label. Maybe Tencent uses a white label version form of Stadia. Yeah. They I don't think Stadia Google's tech. liked in, in China at all. No. Like, I don't think government... I, like I don't think all. Google is in China. No, I think it's, it's all... Like, it's, I think it's internal. blocked. I think, I think all the search engines are run by the Chinese state or run yeah. by companies sponsored by the Chinese state. So I actually don't think any of these will get there anytime yeah. soon. Um, Communism. Luna being Amazon, I can't see. I, I can't see China, same, China same being thing, fa- yeah. they're falling the bracket. Even maybe they might be a bit more accessible with Microsoft. Yeah, I would say Microsoft have the best chance, but in the yeah. reality, I can't see any of them getting in it. I think it will I, be like a Chinese focused or ten cent driven. I think I'm going to go with GeForce now, because GeForce now isn't a sales platform. It's like it's, a supplementary... Yeah, I've always said GeForce Now is a fantastic utility. It's a mm. way of playing games that you already own on PC, on various PC platforms on the go. So I think logistically it might be easier for GeForce Now. And with M- NVIDIA um, being like a graphic, massive graphics card manufacturer, among other things, mm-hmm. they've probably already got infrastructure in China. Uh, is Steam so, available in China then? I don't know. I'm going to quickly Google that. Is Steam I don't, I don't think. I don't think it is. Or in China. So the internet version of Steam has been available for China for years. An official Chinese release of the popular PC gaming platform has now um, d- debuted. All yeah, right, okay. it, it seems quite recent, though. I think it's like this year. All right, really recent. So but it I'm has, just thinking, it only like, has fifty uh, in February this year. It had fifty three games in the platform. So very heavily, yeah. As it's you very, expect, yeah. It's very heavily curated. So Cur- curated is a nice way of saying things. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's just interesting because that's again, it's a massive like it's billions of people in terms of like sales opportunity. But yeah, um, I think cloud gaming for the most part will be pushed. From the western side yeah i think for me if i'm any of these china's not going to be my focus to be honest no. as much as it is probably the biggest market mm-hmm. it's also going to be the most complicated and most restrictive one to get into yeah. where for relatively cheaper relatively more easy you're probably going to get in india or a brazil mm-hmm. it's it's probably even easier to get into japan than china yeah Oh yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah. in terms of like expansion, I think we're totally right in saying um, we will South see Korea. more countries. There's, no, there's another massive <laughs> gaming community. Yeah, that's an interesting one. But um, I don't think it'll be long. I think again, it's just a case of like switching on the tap. Yeah. With these things, because we know the infrastructure works, the text there. You just need, like I said, you just need the accessibility of the the right internet speeds to have yeah. it without the need of an expensive box. So I'm sure they're working hard behind the scenes to kind of negotiate either the government deals or the the testing and stuff. And I I really just hope that all of these platforms, Luna, GeForce, XCloud, stuff. I think they just want to use them to just push cloud gaming because collectively, if they're all slowly turning on the faucet in these relevant countries, they all have a great brand new opportunity to showcase the, the ability that cloud gaming brings and they all have a fresh start with every new country to market this right and like you said it grows the platform it grows the communities it grows the player base and as we tick towards like the end of the ps5 and series x life cycle everyone makes that next decision of do i have 400 pound 500 dollars to drop on a new platform where does that go and if you can just use your phone for the last 10 years like you might have been doing great but until uh, some of them come out and either tell us or market it or do something, we'll just have to sit and wait, Richie. Looking at the map of the world, thinking, where are we going to plant those flags? Right, so I think to round up the show, um, if you got to pick one country, that would be the next what place that you're going to launch Stadia in. What country would it be? Are you asking me or are you asking the chat? In the um, I'm asking you, but chat, let right. us know in the comments. <laughs> 
Uh, next country, where am I allowed to pick? Um, personally, I think Australia would be a like. I think that I think they'll launch more than one at the same time. I think it'll be like four yeah. or five. Maybe you only get to pick one for, for the sake but of this I, question. For the sake yeah. of this, I think Australia because yeah. they don't have to do any language altering because again, Stadia is English. So I think it's it's an easy jump across from that. Like you said, xCloud are there now. So I think the server infrastructure for Google compared to Microsoft shouldn't be that far behind. And I think there's a whole there's a whole games industry culture in Australia that are like kind of probably ready to take that jump into cloud. And if xCloud are there now, that means Luna, you'd like to think, isn't going to be too far behind. GeForce now. Yeah, I think I want to say Australia, Richie. Plus, well, I'd like see- to see some Australian people show up in our comments. Yeah, I like Australia. I'm- I'm going with India, actually. My, my reasons are India are an emerging superpower. Mm-hmm. So they're massively going. They've got a huge population. Mm-hmm. Like, one, Literally, think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like the second highest lot, in the world, a, I think. Yeah. There's a lot of people, and the economy is growing and growing and growing and growing, which mm-hmm. is good, so the emerging market. And um, none of the other big players, are, cloud gaming players, are in there yet. So Google, you have an op- Google are very well revered in, in, um, in you have well. an opportunity to capture a huge market before other people make any real inroads um, so that's why I I would think India would be the big one for me that would be if I'm like at Google I'm the one who has to make a decision where we put our focus on next for me it would be India I think that's um, a, a very good one, especially because the Google C- CEO as well, Sundar Pichai. I think he is. He's an, an Indian American, so he's got. I like, didn't even own, think of that. He's got his own <laughs> personal ties to um, growing up in India. So, not, not that a CEO would have much influence, but you've got to imagine as it goes up the ladder and they're green lighting countries, you would see your like the country you were like. If England was on that list, I would look at it and go, yeah. "Can we uh, can we focus on that, please? Just for my own personal interests." Um, I, and a smaller company, I think, can do that. A, co- a corporation size of Google, I don't think you it can. It might to. not be, yeah, it's not just like a 10 man team. But yeah. uh, in terms of, I know the servers and stuff, I know they've launched a lot in India. So, yeah, I, I would say that's a, yeah. a, a good, safe, safe bet as well. And a really interesting one because, like you said, similar to Brazil, every time I see Twitter, put, um, Twitter Stadia's Twitter account post something, there's always a handful of people going, When is it available in India? When's it coming to India? Can I play this in India yet? Yeah. Hopefully soon, and maybe you'll even be able to get a damn controller with it as well, unlike Poland and, and the other bunch of countries. But stop that's giving us, stop yeah. giving us premier editions. Give the yeah. rest of the world them. I, I have enough Google. More. Give yeah. mine to some poor I, Romanian. We'll, we'll donate, <laughs> donate it back to them. Yeah, some Romanian who's just got a SNES controller hooked up to the phone so they can play Stadia. But with that, that's all all we have time for you this week. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked the video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon for notifications when all of our stuff goes live. Um, Hit us up in the Discord if you have an idea for a topic that you'd like us to discuss. Um, Thank you again once more for all your support during that Helix Cloud Gaming Celebration 2021 where we raise over a thousand pounds for Alzheimer's Society and help in the fight against dementia. Shout out, massive shout out to all the other um, content creators who are doing charity work over this month as well. Um, and with that, I've been Richie. I've been Chris. Thank you very much for watching. Quest completed.